Key in Transit, Wednesday, October 18, 8.36 a.m. from Maui, Hawaii. We got 32.5 in the sun and 42.5 in the earth. 32, duration, continuity. Line 5, flexibility. Easy adaptation to circumstances. The moon exalted. Or superficially, superficiality is a valuable tool that while masking the inner light permits adaptation to prevailing conditions. An instinct for adaptation in times of change. On the Mars side, we have the urge to express one's self in distinct and often violent rejection of conformity. The potential of the instinct to reject adaptation and conformity in times of change. So naturally, duration, continuity, talking about change. Fifth line is the universalization, right? It's, it's a heretical line. And the, the, the sub keynote with flexibility is easy adaptation to circumstances, right? So that's either going to present itself as a simple instinct for adaptation during the change, or the rejection of the adaptation or the conformity. Pretty simple? Pretty simple. Makes sense. Yeah. Right, because we're building up to line six in a way, right, which is tranquility, the need to calmly face impermanence. I do all this. Each one of these rungs is a ladder is a different perspective on on um, the elements that comprise change or continuity and duration. Like third, lack of continuity. Third line, indecision, times of transformation. A lack of instinct in times of transformation. Right. This is this is the the third line is the most material line that we have in in the. Uh, in the hexagrams, grossly material, physically material. And the fifth, as I was saying earlier, is this sort of like universalization. Um, so the moon and Mars, so basically um, these roll in, I'll use this to explain. So you can see each one of these lines is um, polarized either in uh, Exaltation or a detriment. Exaltation, detriment, exaltation, detriment. This is what we were reading today. There's a symbol next to it that if this shows up in that symbol or the pairing gate shows up in that symbol, so if the moon is in gate 54, then this line will be fixed into the exaltation. But I say uh, moon side and Mars side now as, a, as an alternative to saying, um, as an alternative to saying uh, exaltation and detriment. So hopefully you guys can see this. You guys seeing video? Oh. <laughs> oh my. Do you see the video now? Where's the video? <laughs> oh, uh, no. Anybody seeing video? All right. So All right. Well, Maybe Nikki was the one Discord that asked the app. questions. Um, yeah. Sometimes the Discord app is is a little unstable, especially if you're on mobile. But basically, the exaltation and detriment are linked to certain planets. And if <coughs> some there's some kind of activation in that planet, it will uh, <laughs> it will lock it into exaltation or detriment. So what I'm saying. Um, so you don't have to know where the moon and Mars are. I mean, you could use neutrino design. It'll tell you right there in the yellow. Um, that column right there, whether or not. So like, for instance, you could see Jupiter right there has a uh, an arrow next to it. Kind of blurry. But that, that means that the 24, like, for instance, we can look at that. 24, it's in Jupiter, locks it in exaltation this transit is in Jupiter, so that whole, that line of that transit is, is an exaltation. Basically, again, it's, it's, it's just fixating um, exaltation or, or detriment, 
And again, the app will tell you. So. He has a shirt on today. I have my shirt on today. It's the same shirt I've been wearing for the past three days. Um, I like it. It says light worker on it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, yeah. So that's uh, from the rave eaching, which is what we uh, use in human design. And now Luke is going to read from the regular eaching or the original eaching. Oh, gee, translated. <clears throat> Nine in the fifth place means, which, you know, speaking of that, there's like, I've noticed this. Some of the different lines will have like circles or squares next to them. Hmm. Got to figure out what that means. Interesting. All right. Nine in the fifth place, 832, friendly retreat. Perseverance brings good fortune. It is the business of the superior man to recognize in time that the moment for retreat has come. If the right moment is chosen, the retreat can be carried out within the forms of perfect friendliness without the necessity of disagreeable discussions. Yet, for all the observance of amenities, absolute firmness of decision is necessary if one is not to be led astray by irrelevant considerations. Yeah, this is a time for a friendly retreat. And we're in the... Oh, no. I read the wrong one. <laughs> I was like, that this is not right. right. What are okay. you doing, beep, beep, back it up. Beep, beep. That didn't happen. Who are we? Over here. Six in the Flexibility. Fifth place. <laughs> giving duration to one's character through perseverance. That sounds about right. This is a good fortune for a woman, misfortune for a man. A woman should follow a man her whole life long, but a man should at all times hold to what his duty at, is given at the moment. Should he persistently seek to conform to the woman, it would be a mistake for him. Accordingly, it is altogether right for a woman to hold conservatively to tradition, but a man must always be flexible and adaptable and allow himself to be guided solely by what his duty requires him of him at the moment. So duration to one's character through perseverance. It's about an Andrew Tate, right? This one? <laughs> an Andrew Tate. It's, it's so Renfield. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> um, interesting. I've never actually seen the I Ching. I mean, I Ching is like... I mean, you would look at it with a modern perspective and call it sexist, but it was just a different time. Um, yeah, it was written for, like, war times. War and ruling and, and way that back kind of China. stuff. But I was just thinking, like, I haven't really heard the I Ching too much delineate, like, good for a man, bad for a woman. Mm -hmm. Like, it's good for the man to be flexible. It's not good for the woman to be flexible. And by good, that's a terrible word. But um, not superior, possibly. Um, but in this one, I wonder, it's like, you know, if it's applied to a man or a woman, I would imagine it's this the same polarity regardless of the gender mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, and, that, and I think that's what the rave eaching does with the eaching. Yeah. In a way, like it updates the, um, the essence, like the thing they were touching at that's contextualized by war and rulership into um, personal awakening, basically, mm -hmm. and circuitry. And day-to-day -day life. Yeah, which is awesome. So, again, transit energy. I'd see people um, exemplifying this adaptation, and then in two days, they're not going to be as adaptable anymore, or their, their relationship with change is going to uh, not be as present for them anymore, for people that don't have this gate. Um, you also might see people uh, rejecting the willingness rejecting change. So it's, it's, it's the thing about the transits is you're usually going to have the collective, the unconscious collective in one or one of the other, one of the extremes, right? Mm -hmm. To either rejecting change or being like overly flexible, right? That's because these um, neutrinos that are hitting us currently are, um, are programming neutrinos for the rest of life that's that's being born right now like I, um who was it alexander the guy who developed neutrino design he he messaged us a couple days ago during one of these tea and transits that his baby was born and so she's born with gate 32 in her son and gate uh 42 in her earth <laughs> well those neutrinos are being somehow <laughs> That's great. 
Well said, well said, Dragon. <laughs> it's funny, right? You can just blame the neutrinos. Um, Damn neutrinos. Damn neutrinos. Well, you know, it's funny because, right, like you can blame nature or you can blame nature, right? There's no real other way around it. Because if I blame you, then I'm still blaming myself. But if I blame myself, I'm still blaming myself. It's just a matter of like how many hoops am I going to jump through before I have to take responsibility for my own shit? Mm. Yeah. All right. Accountability. 842, increase. Line five, self actualization. Sunside exaltation is the fulfillment and actualization of purpose as a natural path whose reward is a healthy sense of self rather than the power and influence that naturally follow. Growth that is self fulfilling and naturally leads to influence. Venus in detriment. Self actualization as a strictly inner experience that may demand result in a reclusive nature, inner growth that empowers reclusiveness. So again, this isn't necessarily um, a good or a bad. This is one of the more neutral um, line expressions. And oh my god, Sean, you're the best. <laughs> so funny. Uh, so we're talking about right growth. Self-fulfilling growth that leads to influence contrasted with inner growth that empowers reclusiveness. So that's the thing, right? Like you could be on your spiritual journey and growth for you might look like going out and being with more people than you usually be with. It also might be spending a lot less time with people than you usually would, right? So again, you'll, you'll see that. I'm growing so much. I'm not seeing as many people. I'm growing so much. I'm talking to everybody, mm. right? And it's not it's not a um, good or bad. It's a which one are you experiencing in the moment, right? Is is the growth um, self actualizing? Is it is it fulfilling in and of itself? Um, is there some payoff that you're waiting for at the end? Um, and specifically, again, is it causing uh, you to gain influence or to step further back into the cave? And maybe let go of influences. Well, <laughs> I'll be deep in that cave. <laughs> it's time to come out. I feel you, bro. I've been reclusive. We should caption this. <laughs> if you're not following your strategy and authority, you're being a complete idiot. You're being a total fucking dumb sick. <laughs> You already read that one? Let's yeah. read this one. Nine in the fifth place, 42 E increase. If in truth you have a kind heart, ask not. Supreme good fortune. Truly, kindness will be recognized as your vir virtue. True kindness does not count upon nor ask about merit and gratitude, but acts from inner necessity. As such a truly kind heart finds itself rewarded in being recognized, and thus the beneficent influence will spread unhindered. So yeah, it's not looking for gratitude and merit, rather just knowing it from like the inner works, and it uh, being recognized and rewarded on its own. Not being like, oh, please see me, please see me, just doing the thing and being seen doing it. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's like the per like someone that you see doing something that they love doing it. And it's like, yeah, the, the act of doing it is the thing that they love, not what they get from doing it, mm -hmm. which that it was, what we're saying also, too, is that is the thing that naturally leads to influence or naturally leads to um, attaining influence is and same like like this is a good example is kind of like. I love learning about human design and so in the, my studying of it you know i'm sharing it with people so people see that and i become more influential like the payoff is not um you know money or um the influence itself it's like i read stuff and then i think about the people in my life and i say oh i'm able to understand them better as to why they do the things that they do because human design. So it's, you know, it's, it's very cathartic in that sense. Um, selflessness. 
I wouldn't necessarily call it selflessness so much as a, um, and, and, and at least in the contrast of like selfish and selfless, it's more like selflessness in the sense of like no self, having no self. Um, yeah, getting to share the hypercaucus or special interests. Hyperfocus. Hyper, I was like, what hyper, is a hypercaucus? <laughs> getting to share the hyperfocus or special interest. Right. So with that, you know, again, in the transits, like if you have this, then you may not notice it as much. If you don't have this, you may notice it quite a lot, or you may be suppressing the noticing of it. But the reason we do this show is so that people can, um, and y'all can um, tune in to the energy that is um, being experienced on a collective level. Because the sun shoots us with neutrinos and it goes through us, it goes through the earth, it goes through the planets, picks up influences from us, picks up influences on the way to us, right? And this is as, as, as close as we've gotten. I was talking to, well, yeah, yesterday, I was like, Human design is the most advanced mm -hmm. um, system of visualizing the energy that we have ever had, right? Like when they found out that they could x-ray people and look at the bones in their body, and then they found out they could MRI people and look at all the tissues and stuff in their body. Like, that's what we have here. But you don't need some like wild, you know, $100,000 machine you just need a book or a $40 subscription to neutrino design. <laughs> and it's so advanced and so accurate. That's why so many more people are picking up onto this. And so it's the ultimate character stat page. Yes, exactly. I've been meaning to make a video talking about Pokemon <laughs> again, because it's just exciting to make videos that compare us to Pokemon. <laughs> anyway. Thank you guys for tuning into T and Transits. Um, I heard that uh, Life Force did a super cool session earlier today. And um, so that's dope. Um, there's going to be more awesome stuff like that. Sean has been, um, I think I saw Jude's in, in, the, um, in the lounge as well, full open invitation you know you you don't need permission or my permission to um to hop in the lounge and just start talking you know and my rule is like just keep it sacred you know um it doesn't know it doesn't always have to be about human design um but keep it sacred keep it um you know respectful um have fun nikki i'm glad this was beneficial the transits are something that you know, it's it's a great way to learn the gates because you get two gates for, um, you know, five to six days, two commandments, be cool, don't be an asshole. Exactly. Um, and on top of that, you know, it's, it's, it's really a practice of um, recognizing the gates in others, which is something that is is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, with the practice, because, again, it's, it's it can it can be all up in your head and that's great. But until you can like recognize it, and this this is where like the the magic of like keynoting, of course, as prana arrives, um, comes into. Oh, I meant life force, but this too, yes, life force was like is like, and he's and he's he's formally trained as well. So, you know, me, I'm a heretic, three five. So I just like went through this book and spent years, and he also spent years, but he got it from the source. So. Um, yeah, I'm really stoked. We're all really stoked to have Life Force. And um, that being said, too, me and Life Force are running a course starting January 22nd, um, which if you want to get involved with that, just click my profile and follow the link in the bio. And you're looking for the Live Your Design course. Um, that's going to be starting on the actual new year, which is going to be January 2nd of next year. You ever wonder why like so many people's New Year's resolutions fail? It's because they're starting New Year's resolutions three weeks before um, the actual energetic New Year, which is is, is really uh, how you say, um, you know, classic, like, you know, 440 hertz, like basically the powers that be broadcasting this just slightly skewed natural rhythm. 
right? And so, so we're giving people an opportunity to um, live your design on the actual new year, January 22nd, energetic new year, baby. I wonder what's the transit going to be? Uh, 41. Is that where it starts? Yeah, 41 is the initiating codon. So that's that's the thing that all like DNA starts with is the 41 pairing. Hmm. And then it then it builds whatever s- sequence after that. I'm a scientist. Um, I basically have been doing science my whole life, and um, yeah, I can I can prove things um, by using other scientists and their brains. And when they agree with me, they get paid. And when they don't agree with me, they feel pain. Paid versus pain. Yeah, exactly. It's the new exaltation and detriment, paid or pain. Um, it's a silly kind of morning here. Silly. I won't apologize. No. Um, well, I think that's it, guys. Love you. Peace. Keep an eye out for the um, the lounge. Um, subscriptions are available for those of you that want to support. It's always um, super appreciated. <clears throat> We're always grateful. Thank you to the Boosters, Dragon, Sean, and Prana. Um, love you guys. Energetic New Year, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. This is great. Have a great day, everyone. Aloha. Bye. Thank you.